the last major health survey done in Singapore in 2010 showed that the crude prevalence of uh, diabetes amongst adult Singaporeans was 11.3%. Uh, this figure is expected to increase over the years and that's because the population of Singapore is rapidly ageing and we have many more older folks now as compared to years before. Together with this, obesity has become a bigger health problem in Singapore over the last few years as well. And this is affecting the younger folks and the middle-aged uh, patients. And together, these two factors then increase the prevalence of uh, diabetes and we expect this to increase over the next few years as well. Kutek Wat Hospital Diabetes Centre Diabetes Empowerment Programme was designed to be a group education class. We try to engage the patients as well as their relatives to come together to provide support to each other to learn about the necessary skills and knowledge about diabetes so that they can manage their diabetes on their own better. The intensive insulin program has taught me how to think and act like a pancreas. It has taught me the different types of insulin, when it peaks, how long it lasts in my body and how it affects my blood sugar. At the same time, I was taught carbohydrate counting. Most importantly, I was able to identify what is my insulin to carb ratio so as to achieve better diabetes control. After patients attend the intensive insulin therapy program, they are invited to clinic for follow-up and we try to optimise the diabetes control during clinic. If necessary, we offer them these technologies such as continuous glucose monitoring and insulin pump to further enhance their diabetes management. This program has improved my quality of life tremendously. I was able to incorporate exercise into my daily routine such that I feel more energetic to cope with my daily, daily activities and still have good blood sugar control. has adopted the next generation sequencing methodology approach to try to understand the genetic variation pattern differences between people with young onset diabetes, late onset diabetes or no diabetes. We hope that by looking at these differences in genetic variation pattern, it will give us insights into the disease biology pathway that are important in the development of diabetes and its complication. We hope that uh, through better choice of treatment that match the patient well, that it will help to prevent the major diabetes complications such as blindness and stage renal failure and uh, lower limb amputations. We can't do anything about the genes that we've been given, but our environment and lifestyle are factors that we can potentially do something about. So here at Kutekbot Hospital, we are trying to identify the molecules and proteins which get activated during exercise and dietary caloric restriction. The two activities we know that have beneficial effects in terms of disease prevention and treatment for diabetes. We have also looked at their effects on energy expenditure, physical activity levels and various metabolic parameters such as glycemic control and insulin sensitivity and the results so far have been encouraging. Peripheral vascular disease is one of the most common foot complications in our patients. The first part of my clinical research was involved in trying to identify what the prevalence of peripheral vascular disease has been in, in our patients with diabetes and that's roughly around 15% or so. Also went on to identify what the risk factors of peripheral vascular disease are it is fairly similar to other risk factors reported elsewhere. In addition, we also have some novel risk factors associated with endothelial dysfunction as well as markers of vascular stiffness. The next stage of my research is to, to see which of these identified risk factors will eventually predict outcome of our patients, outcome of gangrene, outcome of 
amputations and to start, try to see also how targeting of each of these risk factors will benefit in reducing the outcome of patients. Besides clinical research, I'm also involved in some early stages of some molecular research uh, involved in identifying some new angiogenic factors with an effort to, to see whether these angiogenic factors will help to improve circulation in future. Right now, diabetes care is very much based on treatment approaches which are meant for the masses or segments of the patient population. But over time, we hope to be able to customise care and personalise care in such a way that we could then tailor-make treatment regimens for uh, each individual patient based on his um, profile, whether it is uh, his biodata profile or whether it is his pathologic profile. And then we can practice really personalised medicine for the diabetic patient.